Lee Diffie, you are standing next to someone who is vitally important to you as a friend, but also massively influential in your career. Here we are, days before the Indy 500, you'll be calling on NBC. Who is the gentleman standing next to you? Well, this is a fellow Aussie as well. This is an old friend and colleague of mine, John Smiles. And uh, John has covered motorsport all around the world, but has never done the Indianapolis 500. This is his first one. But this is extra special for me because the two of us happened to be at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1999. I was a young guy just getting going on Australian television and John said, listen, you can be a big fish in a small pond or you can be the opposite. He said, I think you should be over here in Europe, in America, in the Northern Hemisphere. So this guy was the catalyst to get me out of Australia, so to speak. John, what did you see in him that none of us admittedly have still seen since? But there's, <laughs> there's the potential, but what did you see about uh, our boy Diffie here? Timing was the answer to your question, Marshall. We were shooting a documentary in Le Mans. We were doing it as live. We were standing on the grid. There was one opportunity to get Martin Brundle coming over the uh, uh, the start line uh, in the in the warm-up uh, whilst he was on the back of a uh, of a presentation car, and uh, we had to nail it in one. Diffie was taking the lead, all he had to do was throw to me, all I had to do was talk, turn to Martin Brundle, ask a question, Martin had to answer, go back to Lee, we had to get it. Martin was never going to go back to do it again. Diffie absolutely brained it. You know, this young kid from Australia, and I turned to him and said, mate, you talk to 25 million people in Australia, if you went overseas you'd be talking to 225 million. And it was a throwaway line. I never thought he'd take me up on it, <laughs> but he did. You know, six months later, he was in, in Britain in the start of a career you know now. And I know you take great pride in all he's achieved. And, and Lee, tell me about having him here. Now, he's written a book about Aussies and those dirty Kiwis, of course, who've <laughs> raced at the Indy 500, uh, had our, our late friend Robin Miller who helped him with that. But, boy, you talk about pride and having someone who's so, so important to you now here at a place that you love. Well, I, I think that the, the next layer of, of important depth is for the fact that we could be here and we could both experience the, the Indy 500 together, but the fact that, that I'm working it and calling it, uh, this is NBC Sports' fifth Indianapolis 500, and I've had various friends come uh, from Australia family. My mum came to the first one that I called, and so some really significant and important people to me, it's almost each and every year they come, And but for John to be the one to, to give me that career nudge and also that for him to say it and to, to instill that confidence in me to have a go, you know, and, and to, to have a crack. Um, I never thought in my life that I'd be commentating the Indianapolis 500, so to, to share the experience with this guy is immense.